Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. I'm Texas T, and I'm an alcoholic. And uh, I don't know why I was thinking about uh, about uh, uh, Chris and Myers Raymer today, but but maybe my Texas accent was going to be stronger because I, I love those Texas boys. Uh, if you haven't heard them, I highly recommend them. Um, anyway, I'm here today and I get 50 minutes to speak. Uh, has the timer started? I'm, I'm watching that timer. I don't think it started yet. But anyway, whether it has or not, I'm going to speak and, and I'll, just, I'll just say that um, I got sober December 25th. 1990. That means I'm uh, 32 years sober. I got sober when I was uh, 35. So that means I'm 67 years old. And how I got to be that old, I I don't know. I mean, to some people, it's young. But to me, it's kind of like, well, 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 let let me tell you something about having a higher power that that I love that I never, I, I mean, who would have guessed that that I would have to come to AA to find a higher power? I mean, uh, everything in AA, AA is just magical. It's mysterious. It's amazing. And it's all directed by a power greater than myself. Um, but but uh, when I, right before I was turned 60, I was freaking out because I'm just like, I did not plan for this. I don't have a, I didn't have a nest egg. I didn't have any idea how I was going to take care of myself in the future. And so I looked up to the heavens and I just said, okay, this is your deal because I didn't plan for this. So you must have some plans for me. And I I'm, I'm just going to keep my eyes open and pay attention to what you got for me because um, I'm out of ideas. I had done, I've done everything on my bucket list so it, it's definitely your deal. And, and so, you know, all these little things that happen bring me closer to that power greater than me. It, it makes my relationship with that invisible best friend that I have, uh, thanks to AA, it, it makes, makes it more in, uh, intimate. It makes me um, have to work on trusting that power uh, more and more and more and more. So, you know, I've always got, got things to do because I'm always getting closer to that higher power. I'm always learning things from that higher power. Every day when I wake up, I'm like, God, can you can you show me and teach me how to be more like you? And I'll tell you why later. Um, I didn't really know. I was so uncomfortable in my skin and so full of fear. I mean, I couldn't identify that when I was a kid. I was so full of fear. I was so uncomfortable in my skin. I, um, I, I was so afraid I was going to do something to make people not like me. And, you know, I was just, I was just paranoid as a kid. And I didn't know that that was my alcoholic mind, but it hadn't met alcohol yet. And the thing is, once I met alcohol, I, 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 I remember the first time I was in my, I was probably 12, maybe 13, I don't know. But but uh, I just remember that I had such an amazing time. And I remember I had passed out on, on a bed and I woke up and I, and I thought, am I dreaming or was that real? And, and I realized it was real and I realized I want to do this for the rest of my life because I felt whole. I felt bulletproof. I felt invincible. I felt loved. I felt like I was funny. Uh, And and also I found everything else was funny. It was, it was just, everything was great. I was reading with a, a, a friend today in a vision for you. If I can find that real quick, I'd like to read something to you. <laughs> uh, I love this. It, it's um, it's as for for most normal folks, drinking means uh, 
Hold on one second, okay? Okay, great. It means conviviality, what a word, companionship and colorful imagination. It means release from care, boredom, and worry. It is joyous intimacy with friends and a feeling that life is good. And uh, that that's that was that was my drinking experience. And and I I wrapped my entire life around a drink. There's no way in the world I was going to do anything that didn't have anything to do with alcohol. So you know I I uh, I became a, a a hairdresser and a musician. Because, you know, I could drink all the time, all the time, all the time. I mean, I have no idea. When, when I first got sober and I had to, and I was still cutting hair, I, I got sober in Los Angeles and I was still cutting hair. It was a very strange experience because I had never cut hair, anybody's hair. Um, <laughs> can you stop speaking so much? What does that mean, Joe? Anyway, uh, 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 what does that mean, Joe? I just got a message in the chat. Can you stop speaking so much? Well, I don't know. I, I thought I was here to speak. So I guess I'm going to just keep speaking. I don't know uh, what that means, Joe. So anyway, uh, sorry for that interruption. But um, and, I, and I totally forgot where I was at. So that means God wants me to move on. So um, anyway, it says here in a vision for you. Uh, that you know it, it described all of the fun stuff that normal uh, drinkers get out of this and it says but not so with us in those last days of heavy drinking the old pleasures were gone and that's what happened to me i had such a great time for years and years and years and years but then it reached a point and i knew i mean i i knew i was an alcoholic from the first time i got drunk because it was just that that was it uh, so the old pleasures were gone. They were but memories. Never could I recapture the great moments of the past. And there was an insistent yearning to enjoy life as I had once, as I once did. And a heartbreaking obsession that some new miracle of control would enable me to do so. There was always one more attempt. And one more failure. That's the story of my life. It's right here in this book. That's exactly what happened to me. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> so that's exactly what happened to me. And 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 um, I tried every trick in the book, and then and then I finally I I I'll tell you why I finally came into AA. And I hope I told you enough about, about my experiences drunk and, and, and how wonderful it was and how it made me, I, I, I lost my fear. I, I lost my uncomfortable in my own skin. Everything was beautiful. I don't know if any of you ever saw that, that, that movie, uh, Wine and Roses, but if you haven't, um, it's about alcoholism and um, the days of Wine and Roses. And, and 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 the girl standing on the bridge, and she she you know she's an alcoholic, and she's like, things just look so ugly because it is you know she's looking at the water, and she's like, yeah, everything looks so beautiful when I'm drunk, the world looks so ugly when I'm sober, and and I could relate to that. It was just, <laughs> and um. And, and uh, so, so I don't know if you can re re relate to those feelings. I mean, I don't really have to, um, you know, a lot of people, they come in and, and they talk about how they don't, they don't relate because of all of the stories, you know, that they didn't go to jail. They didn't get a DUI. They didn't uh, lose their house or, 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 or the boyfriend or the car or, or, you know, they didn't lose stuff. And, and the thing is, when I came into AA, I related to the feelings. I related to, I couldn't believe that people were actually talking about how they felt in such an honest, open way. 
it was just, it was amazing. And, um, and, and the reason why I, I came in is I, I, I you know, I, I was trying every trick in the book and it was a heartbreaking failure. And, and every morning I would wake up with a hole in my soul. That's the best way I can describe it. I didn't even know at that time that that was a God-sized hole. I, you know, I just knew, I just knew uh, for some reason I knew I had a soul and there was a hole in it and that nothing could fill it up. Nothing could fix me and uh, alcohol no longer fixed it. And I truly believe that my, that my alcoholism outgrew the power of alcohol to be my solution. Alcohol's like, you know what? Your alcoholism is just, it, it's, it's over the top. I can't, I can't solve it anymore. And I truly believe that because as they say that, that, um, that my, my alcoholism, it, it only gets worse. It's progressive. And, and that, that has been my experience. And by the way, everything I tell you tonight is only my experience with, with alcoholism and, uh, and my journey. <clears throat> and so, and so the great thing is I got, I got sober in LA. So, um, I, I knew a lot of people that had already gone in the rooms before me. Uh, I was in a band, so I, you know, I was in the, the bar scene and, and a lot of my musician friends ha had gone into AA. And so, you know, it, and, and of course, when I went in, they're like, oh, we've been saving you. Uh, we've been saving you a seat. And of course, I'm like, yeah, but I need a couch. And, and uh, you yeah, know, because because I didn't know anything about what alcoholism is at that point. I didn't know that the characteristics of, of my alcoholism is I'm defiant, I'm grandiose, hence me saying, well, Her Majesty wants a couch. A chair is not good enough. I need to lay down. And, and uh, you know, but, but, you know, I was trying to be funny, but deep down inside, that's probably how I felt because I was defiant and grandiose. And, and the thing is, I was scared to death underneath that defiance and that grandiosity. That was just my outward thing to, to cover up all of the fear inside of me. And I didn't know that that fear was my alcoholism. I didn't know until I knew, but I mean, I knew I was powerless over alcohol. That was, that was a no brainer for me. And, and by doing my, um, uh, controlled drinking, I sure I could admit I was powerless, but I had to accept my powerlessness and, uh, I couldn't just admit it because, you know, I admitted I was an alcoholic and I was powerless over alcohol pretty much from the get go because I wrapped my whole life around it. And, um, but, but accepting it and that, that it, that it was over and that I was powerless over, I couldn't stop on my own power. That was, a. I was, I cried a lot. It, it was like it said in Vision for You, it was heartbreaking to me. And then there's that big dash in step one that my life had become unmanageable. And of course, I'm like, sure it had it. And when I was drinking, of course, the longer I stayed sober, it started to become my thinking that was unmanageable. And then I and then I learned that my thinking was my alcoholism and my ego that my my disease that I had a mind power disease. So so my mind is powered by alcoholism and ego. That was a tough nut to swallow. Um, it, it, but it was it was relieving at the same time because I didn't even find this out until I had like ten years sober. And I found this group called Primetime, which has been my home home group since then. Uh, I didn't really understand what alcoholism is. I, I just went to AA to uh, quit drinking because, you know, it was a drink that was the problem. And I and, you know, being being really clever, I always pick sponsors that would let me get away with things. And so I never really, really built a good foundation. 
And I kept hearing things like, let go, let God. And I would ask people, how do you do that? And nobody could give me an answer. So I'm just like, okay, well, okay. You know, I guess let go, let God. I don't, I don't know how to do that. So, um, and then there was that, that other thing where I heard people share from the podium uh, about their, um, about their, uh, what's it called? Uh, the committee in their head. So I thought the self-talk, I thought that was normal because, you know, they'd, they'd share about the committee and everybody would laugh and I'd laugh and I'd think, oh man, is this, is this how my life is going to be? I'm going to be haunted by this insane self-talk chatter where, where I'm either better than you or I'm, I'm less than you and, 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 I, and I find fault with everything and I'm afraid of everything and I don't know who I, I got to be who you want me to be because I want you to like me I don't even know how to be me because I'm so full of fear I'm so uncomfortable in my own skin I don't realize until I get the prime time that that self-talk is my alcoholism and that it's, it's telling me stories and in step one that I learned that I have a warped mind that 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 my mind is broken at this point it, it, but it and that that I have this ego and and this ego is um, thanks to Dr. Harry Tebow I got to start understanding what my ego is because I thought I was a really nice person I didn't realize because I wasn't looking behind you know consciously I felt like a really nice person but I didn't realize that when I got angry you know that 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 I was hurting other people I didn't realize that really. I just thought that's who I am. I can't help it. And I expected everybody to just deal with it. You know, and, and stuff like that. I didn't I didn't realize that 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 I was a liar. I didn't realize that um I always thought I was right and, and I had all these old these old beliefs and, and you know I had a bad case of the I know. I know. You don't have to tell, you can't tell me anything because I already know. I know. Uh-huh. And, and I didn't realize that that self-talk that was always finding fault with the world and its people was also finding fault with me, but was doubly fi finding fault with me, that it was a big bully that I had no, uh, you're just like the girl standing on the bridge, um, just going like, the world is so ugly when I'm sober. And and the thing the thing is, and I, I had the unsatisfiable mind. I was looking for outside things to fix that hole in my soul. Um so so I learned from that Dr. Tebow that I think I'm the center of the universe. I have I have the characteristics I, uh, uh, of a child. Uh, so I have I have an infantile ego which they call immature. I think the world revolves around me. I'm the center of the universe. So I try to play God. I, I'm the queen. And then I'm easily frustrated and I let everybody know. And boy, I did because I, I would get angry so quick, so quick. But I didn't see that it was because I wasn't getting my way. Now, if I'm about to get angry, I can ask God, please remove that anger. And 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 what is it I want that I'm not getting? And it's usually something because I'm so self-centered and, and selfish. I think everybody should just live to please me. Definitely. And that, that's the characteristic of a child. Please me. Screw you. And, and it's all about me. If you don't please me, you're going to make my resentment list, I tell you. And, and, and you know, it's just, it, it's so immature. It, it's just unbelievable. And then, and then the third characteristic of a child is, is I'm always in a hurry. And I hate the word, no, do not stop me. And if you try, you're going to make my resentment list. Everyone's, everybody who doesn't do everything to please me is going to end up on my resentment list. 
You didn't treat me the way I thought that I should be treated. You didn't give me what I want. And when I, you know, now I go back and I, and, and so when I do my four steps, it's so easy for me to see my ego and my infantile ego because I get mad at people because they are not doing what her majesty wants them to do. And, and, and Freud coined a term, her majesty, the baby. So it, it's, it's really a hard nut to swallow when I really look at how my mind power disease works. But I'm so grateful to get that information to find out what I'm up against. Because consciously, I'm not even conscious of all the stuff that's going on until, until my ego uses one of my, um, uh, <laughs> my character defects to, to bring me, you know, to make me its puppet. And, and, and uh, Chuck C., a uh, uh, new pair of glasses, um, he, he uh, expressed that, that, that the, uh, the character defects are the children, are the children of the ego. And and uh, I I truly believe fear is a child of the ego too because my ego is so afraid I'm not going to get my way I'm not going to get what I want or I might lose something I already have and and in step seven and twelve and twelve it talks about how how my um, uh, character defects are set off by a fear I'm not going to get my way I'm not going to get what I want. Um, you know, like, let, let's say I be, I'm self-righteous. Well, that's because I want to be, uh, uh, my, my, my fear is I need to be, feel superior to you. I'm never right size. And, and the thing is when, when, uh, so, so I start seeing all of these things and that, that I have this need to, to always be right and to be heard and and pay attention to me all my ego stuff so i learn about what i'm up against and i'm like oh dear i'm in trouble and that's the power of me and that is my mind power disease and so i get to go to step two which is where the emotional sobriety starts step one for me was all about getting that plug in the jug and and, and then um learning what I was up against because I have an unmanageable thought life. And, and then, uh, and it's like, and then my sponsor told me, well, there, 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 the good news is we can move on to step two. That's where all of the solution starts. And so we go to step two and it, and it tells me that, that I can, I can come to believe that a power greater than myself can return me to sanity. Now, what does that mean? There, there, you know, I, I had to see that, that when they said a power greater than myself, that they were talking about me being a power. So, you know, it was, it was like, okay. And I could tell because my, 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 my warped mind ran my life and it was a power. It was a power for my life. And I'm like, oh boy, how am I going to find a power greater than that? But it would be, it sounded good to go back to sanity because my thought life was just too insane. I, 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 I had no ease and comfort. I was exhausted all the time from, from, from my, my mind telling me stories and telling me lies and staying in the drama of everything. It made it, I mean, it was, oh, I get tired just thinking about it. Um, <laughs> the good news is my mind is so quiet now because I, I practiced everything I'm going to talk about. And, and that step two in the, in the 12 and 12, I, I had my sponsor, uh, broke it down for me about the, uh, open mind because see, you see, she asked me if I thought I had an open mind and I said, well, yes, I'm very progressive. And she went, no, that's not what I'm talking about. And I went, well, okay. Well, then please tell me what an open mind is. And she said, an open mind is a mind that doesn't contain you. And I went, well, what does that mean? And she's like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't contain all, all of your old ideas, all of your old opinions, all of your ways of thinking. A, an open mind is a mind that can try new things without having an opinion about it. 
And, you know, I heard my mind when she told me that. It's just like, well, that's not going to work for me. And, and, and she goes, there's, there it is. There's your closed mind. There's your old idea. How do you know this isn't going to work for you if you've never tried it? And then I went, oh, oh, that makes sense. Because unless I have an experience with something, I won't know if it's going to work or not. Now, my mind might tell me it won't because my ego is sitting in the throne. It does not want to give up the throne of running my life. So it, it's going to tell me, oh, this God thing is not going to work. Da, 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 da. Uh, you, you know, you, you're, you're, God is punishing and, 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 and cruel and da, 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 da. And, and, and the thing is, how do I know that? I've never even had an experience with a power greater than myself. And at that point, it's just like in my, my sponsor before that sponsor had told me that I could have a loving and caring God, that I could, I could ditch the, the cruel punishing one. And I went, okay. That, so that opened my mind a little bit because it's, it's all up to me. How do I want to see this thing? And, and, and then my, my, my sponsor told me that um, I just had to quit arguing, quit the debating society. In, in other words, stop listening to my ego and my, my alcoholism, um, because that's a closed mind with all my old ideas. And to try something I've never tried before. And, and that step two in the, in the 12 and 12, it tells me that I can be like a scientist because scientists research again and again and again, always with an open mind. They don't set, when they set up an experience, they don't tell themselves, oh, this isn't going to work. They do it with an open mind. They're, they don't know if it's going to work until they do the experiment. And that I could do the same thing. And it started making sense to me because um, how can I have an opinion or belief about something that I've never tried? And so, and so I open my mind and, I, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be a, like a scientist. I'm going to try this thing. And the, and the last uh, sentence is it, it, in the, uh, I'll just read it verbatim. In a step two in the in the twelve and twelve is here we go uh, that um, that there's an assurance that God will restore me to sanity if and I always look at these words if because because if I see an if it's about to give me an application that I need to do for God to restore me to sanity. So God will restore me to sanity if, and look for those ifs throughout the book, if <clears throat> I rightly relate myself to him. So that's my application. I have to learn to rightly relate myself to God so that God can re restore me to sanity. Now, I just, I still didn't know how to do that. I guess I just wasn't smart enough. I wasn't creative enough. I wasn't intuitive enough to, to know how to do this. Rightly relate myself to, to God. Boy, well, how do I do that? And, and, and thank God. And that's who I do thank all the time. I, I, I don't take credit for anything in my life because it was God speaking through this guy from a podium at a primetime meeting that that helped me learn to rightly relate myself to this power that I so desperately needed. And I didn't know how desperately I needed this power. Um, and this, 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 this person said, you know, when you meet somebody and you want to get to know them, what do you do? You know, you want to build form a relationship with somebody. You spend time with them. You get to know them. The more time you spend with them, the better you get to know, and the faster you get to know them. Eventually, you might even trust them. And that's what I can do with a higher power. And I thought, wow, that I would have never thought of that. Nobody had ever told me that. And I thought, how simple. 
because that is exactly how I form a relationship with a human being. And, and, and so it, I, I, fe- I felt kind of weird doing it at first because I was sitting in my room talking to an invisible, which turned out to be my new invisible best friend. But at that time, it was just an, invi- an invisible uh, idea, actually. But I sat in my room and, and, and I go, okay, okay, okay. I, I'm going to open my mind. I'm going to be the scientist. I'm going to try this experiment and see if it works. And so I start talking to this power. And I'm like, I don't even know if I, if I believe in you. I don't even know if you're there. You know, I, I feel silly. I'm, I'm sitting here talking. That's how desperate I am, is I'm sitting here talking to you. Because I heard if I, if I talk to you and I spend time with you, I, I, I can get to know you. And I also heard that you can help me. And then I can ask you to, to help protect me from my thought life. And then I can help you, I ask you to help treat my alcoholism and my ego. And because, you know, at, at that second half of step one, I learned about what I was up against. And, and, and if, 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 the, if, if I don't find a power greater than me, I'm in deep doo-doo. Because I, I can't live with this self-talk and, the, and this insanity any longer. And then, I'm, and then I just said, so can you help me? Can you be with me right now? Can you help me? And, and I started realizing, and I tried to do this more and more. I, I, I did a lot of reminders at first because I, would, I was so used to going to the power of me. That was my default setting. And, and so I, I, I would put a big old fat colored rubber band around my dominant hand. So every time I saw it, I would just remember that there was that I was going to build this relationship with a power greater than me, and that maybe I needed to talk to it real quick. And I didn't. I, and I didn't say, you know, I talk to you just like I'm talking to you. And I just might say, you know, thank you, God, and thank you for this big fat rubber band that I'm looking at to remind me to talk to you. I'm going to try to remember to remember more by having this rubber band. Then when I got used to seeing that rubber band and forgot to go to God, I would, I placed a a new rubber band on my arm, a a different color to wake me up again, you know, because it it tells me I want to have a spiritual awakening. Now, if I'm going to, if I'm going to have an awakening, that means I have to wake up and stay awake. And that's what this whole program is to me is staying awake. It's my responsibility at my conscious effort to, to stay awake, to stay aware of where my thoughts are going. Am I with the, the power of my mind that's telling me lies? If, if I feel, because see, I can feel when I'm with the power of me because I'm in dis-ease. And then I know, ah, I need to redirect my attention to that power greater, my, greater than myself where I get the ease and comfort. Because you see, I can't be with both both powers at once. So I have to stay conscious of it. So I got the power of me and I got the power of my higher power. The power of me is where all the bad stuff is. It's where all my character defects are. It's the woman, it's the character I brought in and it's the woman I no longer want to be. So I, my job is to build a new character with this new power that, that where all the good stuff is. I'll tell you, I can put it in a nutshell. That's why I like to call this keeping it simple. Um, When I'm with the power of me, I'm usually, uh, my mind is busy talking to me. And and it's either self-seeking or it's it's, it's, uh, trying to figure out how I can get around. So I'll, I'll kind of tell a white lie to get my way because I'm afraid you won't get my way. So I'm going to make up a big story and, and, you know, and I, I, I turn into the used car salesman to get my way because I'm a self seeker because I, because, you know, as I described, y'all are supposed to serve me. <laughs> I'm a taker. I'm not a giver. You serve me. You make me happy. And the world is happy, not, and, and, and so, you know, and, and, and as it says in that 60 to 63, it really tells me how I manipulate, how, how do I act to get my way? What do I do? And and so, 
So I start seeing that the character I brought in, it's full of, of, of anger, self-pity, jealousy, sloth, self-righteous, judgmental, self-pity, self-seeking, dishonest, da 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 so that's the power of me. That's my alcoholism and my ego. That that is that is the power of my life. That's how I operate. Now let me tell you about my my higher powers uh, assets. Here's my uh, oh yeah, and, and the power of me: immature, infantile ego, queen baby. Now let's go to the my my higher power who I who I have spent a lot of time with. And and I and I improve my um, relationship with it on a daily basis because I spend as much time during the day talking to my higher power and being with my higher power so I can get all the good stuff. I I I, I still go back to the power of me because I'm human. I mean that's why we have the tenth step because it says when these things crop up, what things, the things I'm watching for. My dishonesty, my character defects, my fears. When these things crop up, I immediately turn to that power greater than myself and I ask for it to remove it. And, 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 and what would you have me do, God? You see, I have to learn how to be this whole new character through the power of my higher power because the only way I know how to act is angry, selfish, self-centered, self-seeking, you know, because that, that has become my go-to, my default character. I need to build a new character along spiritual lines. And let me tell you what I get when I, when I go over to my higher power, because I have gotten to know it and, and, um, and rely on it, man. I mean, when I used to, I used to, uh, not be able to get out of bed in the morning because I was always depressed and I just didn't want to get out of bed. And, and someone in, in, in my primetime group says, why don't you ask God to help you? Duh, I would have never thought. You know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even know how to rely on God. I didn't know how to ask it for these things. You can ask your higher power for anything. Help me file my fingernails. You know, help me make a cup of coffee. Help me whatever help me get out of bed i don't want to get up can you help me get out of bed and guess what that worked i have no problems getting out of bed because it worked it started working immediately god help me with this god help me with that reliance 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 i had to learn how to rely on this power by building new habits because i had my default setting and so here's the characteristics my higher power has. Love, kindness, tolerance, forgiveness, maturity. It, it, my, my higher power can help me learn how to talk to others without using my character defects. Because I ask, I rely on my higher power. How would you have me? Can you teach me how to talk to others the way you talk to me? My higher power is so loving and kind and, and when it and it treats me so well and it's always there for me it's always so loving and compassionate and understanding forgiving you know my my, my higher power really doesn't i don't ever have to ask for forgiveness because my higher power is not judgmental my higher power is not never yells at me never criticizes me and this is what I, what, the more time I spent with this higher power, I got to know it. I saw all this. I felt all of this. And I'm just like, wow. God, can you please teach me to be more like you? Can you please teach me how to treat people the way you treat me? Can you, can you help me learn to talk to them loving and kind and caring even if i have to tell them something serious and or that that you know i i would used to be afraid to talk to people because i was afraid i was going to hurt their feelings and, and I, because uh i don't know i didn't know how to communicate i was afraid i would end up getting angry or that they would get angry i was afraid of their response i was just in fear to talk to somebody you know 
And, and, and the thing is, God, everybody knows we have to have these conversations sometimes, and we don't want to hurt anybody else's feelings. Well, you see, on my own power, I don't know how to do that. And so I asked God, can you help me talk to this person the way you would talk to them? And God helps me be loving and caring and kind when I have to have a not so pleasant conversation. And, and to trust God that if this person gets angry, it, it, they're not angry at how I said this. They may be angry at what I said, but it was, I had to say it and it was loving and kind. So, you know, but, but it's not my job to take care of their feelings. It's my job to stay open and, and keep God there and, and uh, talk to them, have, have God help me talk to them. And, and the thing is, I even asked God, can you help me learn to talk to myself? the way you talk to me because as I mentioned my self-talk used to tear me to pieces I mean still to this day because I am human I slip up you know I'm not perfect then my mind would start tear me up but you see I'm more sensitive I because I watch my mind all the time I watch my thoughts and I'm more sensitive to it now and, I, and I'll go what what did you know let's bring God in on this you're telling me I'm not enough? Well, let's bring God in on it. God, what do you think? Am I enough? And God's like, you bet, kid. You know, and, and am I a loser? <laughs> no, not, not at all, kid. And, and, and so I learned that my, my mind, that self-talk is lying to me, and it will tell me really mean things. And the thing is, if I ask God, what do you think about what my mind just told me? You see, God, because God doesn't tell me mean things. God, God believes in me. A million percent believes in me, is always there for me. Uh, loves that I rely. I mean, it, it's amazing because, you know, if you're going to hire a manager to do something for you in life, don't you need to get to know that manager, spend some time with that manager? See if you can, if you even like that manager, if you can trust that manager, if you can rely on that manager before you, you pay them and hire them. Well, it makes sense to me I could, that that's what I was doing when I got, when I started spending time with my higher power. Because, you know, in step three, it tells me I'm going to have a new manager. And the thing is, well, I better get to know that manager. And so I learned how to rightly relate myself to a power greater than me by having no preconceived ideas about this power. I spent time with it. I got to know it. I got to see how it treated me. And, and, and now that's, you know, I spend all my time with that and, and, I'm, and I'm so happy to have it manage my life. You know, I have to still watch my mind to see when I try to play God. I have to watch my mind to see when I try to manage things. And when I, when, I, when I see that, I go, oh, there I go again, God. I guess I don't trust you. Look at me. I'm trying to manage this. I can't manage this. Would you please manage this for me today? And, and I thank you, God, because I thank God for every, everything in my life. Because you see, I couldn't have accomplished anything without God's power. So I give all the credit for anything in my life to that higher power. Now, if something bad happens to me, do I blame it on God? Nah. I don't know if you any if you are familiar with uh, Emmett Fox, but but in the in the Sermon on the Mount, there's this one page when he's breaking down the Lord's Prayer. And I'm not religious, but you know, as it says in the book, I read spiritual material to enlarge my spiritual experience. And um, so in, uh, there's a page where it's breaking down the Lord's Prayer of the Hallowed Be Thy Name page. And on that page, it, it says a rose bush cannot produce lilies. And just like that, God can only produce good. God doesn't produce bad. And so I, I pondered on that because I like to think these things over. 
So, so God, usually it's me or another human, you know, because human reliance fails me. So it's another human that, that, that creates bad things. And then there's nature, you know, let's not even get into that because that is just like, wow, what's it, what's it going to do next? But, but, you know, God is there, my, my God, I'm talking about my personal experience. God is there to help carry me through when life happens and bad things happen, not blame God, but go to God and say, wow, can you help me get through this? What would you have me do? Because see, if I go to the power of me when something bad in life happens, it's going to be a big drama my mind's going to tell me it's the end of the world that it's the, i'm the only person that this has ever happened to and i'm going to get so self-centered and dramatic about this whole thing and it's so much self-pity that i'm going to drown myself in insanity but if i pause like it always talks about and i go to my higher power oh my god this just happened and i'm really scared can you be with me what would what would you have me do? Can 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 you help me get through this? And, and when I rely on God to help me get through the bumps in the road in life, with God always helps me get through it with grace and dignity, and it takes me out of my me isms because I I realize I'm not the only one in the world that has bad things happen in life. I, and, 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 and people have things much worse than me and they get through it with grace and dignity. And, and so I, I'm, I have a feeling that they must have a power that they talk to, to help them get through these things. Because I only know how to operate on, on fear and character defects. That's all, that's, that was what my character ran on. So now I get to go to my higher power and ask my higher power to help me. Help me get through this. You help me, help me, help me. You know, and my higher power might send me, because you know, in the book on that, in that 11th step, it tells me if I ask, if I ask in the morning or all through the day, if I ask this, uh, can you divorce me from my self-centered, my selfish, my, my self-seeking motives, you know? Can can you divorce me from the the drama and the self talk and the 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 hysterical fear that I'm feeling right now? Because if 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 I ask God to divorce me from that, I can have intuitive thoughts, and that's because my channel of that higher power is not clogged up with me. And the thing is, I can get anything through anything in life. It's scary. When, when, when bad or, or weird things happen, it's scary. You bet it's scary. But, but the thing is, I can take that fear to that high, higher power. And I can rely on that higher power and trust that higher power that it's going to give me, as long as I stay divorced from me and my power, it's going to give me intuitive thoughts. It's going to remind me that this has happened to other people. It might even give me a couple of names that I can contact and go, oh yeah, that happened to Sue. I, I can call Sue and see what she did. God is, is a great director. I mean, for me, but I had to spend time with it and get to know it and, and, and it helped me with the rest of the steps because you know what, I, I needed... I didn't know how to have a firm foundation. So I hope some of the things that I shared with you, I mean, my way is not the only way, but, but for me, it was very simple. It was very straightforward. It was very doable. I just had to do it. I had to do the application. And I always call, I, I love it that, that y'all did the uh, set aside prayer. I call that my step two prayer because it's, it's asking me to set aside, and I love that I can fill in the blank with anything. Set aside what I think I know about making a cup of coffee. Set aside what I think I know about whether I need to get a tooth pulled or not. Set aside everything I think I know about me, about the world, about the, about the people in the world, about, about this uh, 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 program of recovery about you, God, 
just help me set aside everything I think I know about everything across the board so that I may have a new experience with an open mind with you. Please show me the truth. You see, because uh, God is the only entity, the only power that can show me the truth, the power of me, the, the truth it, tell, it shows me is all lies. It's all fears. It's all character defects. It's, it's all self-seeking. It's all about me. I, I don't consider you. When I'm with the, my higher power, my higher power connects me to you, our hearts. When I see that I'm human and that I make mistakes and I used to be ashamed and get guilt and be embarrassed, and when I learn from God that, that I don't need to beat myself up, that I just need to learn to forgive myself and, and to accept that I'm human, I make mistakes. And, and when I do that, that I can see when you make a mistake and you can, I, I'm, much, I'm much harder on myself when I make a mistake. If you make a mistake, I can be compassionate and forgiving. And, and the thing is, so I just need to, I need, because I make, I'm not perfect. I have to not judge you if you make a mistake. And God has, and this program has taught me how to do that. Because I see me and you and you and me, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And love is the healer of all. And that is the most, that is the strongest characteristics of my higher power that's always there for me and loves me like I've never been loved. I, I didn't even know that, that, that what love could, could be. And it's teaching me to love myself and to love others without expectations. And that, that's another whole subject. That's me thinking you need to do what I want. I have expectations and my time is up. I love you all. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.